Hello everybody, and today I'm going to be reviewing my favorite movie of all time, or at least one of them, on the 10 year anniversary of the Lego movie. So, uh, I saw this when I was only in third grade. That was a very long time ago, and a lot has changed since then. And when this movie came out, I was super pumped because it's my favorite toy put into a movie. And a lot of people probably weren't expecting much from this movie because they thought, oh, this is just to popularize on something popular and just make a movie out of it. And I think the Lego movie kind of inspired other movies to kind of follow that kind of trend. But the way they did this movie... They did it a uh, like it, to a big it, it was like a big surprise when this movie came out. Like they actually explore fun funny characters, good messages, and that's what we're going to talk about. So the Lego movie stars Chris Pratt as Emmett Bukowski as he lives a pretty average life. He wakes up, he he says good morning to everyone. He watches TV, he goes to work at a construction yard, but that doesn't change until he starts to see a, what the truth behind it all is. What, as he is going through his routine, he's getting his coffee, he's watching TV, as I said. He meets up with his work buddies, he listens to the song, everything is awesome. But it isn't until while he's looking through his, he tries to catch his instructions as he uses his, these instructions to go through his set routine. He instead sees someone mysterious look rummaging through the construction yard. But Emmett tries to uh, tell her to, that she shouldn't be around here, but he gets distracted once he finds her super pretty. But he tries to follow her. But Emmett falls into a pit and he sees a mysterious alien like radiation or of something and he touches it. And then everything flashes. He has like a big vision and he wakes up to a man named Bad Cop and he tells him he's the special and he has the piece of resistance but i forgot to mention it earlier in the movie it opens with our character named vitruvius played by a legendary actor morgan freeman who uses his staff to try to stop the evil president business who for some reason wants this thing called the craggle but Vitruvius tells the story of how the ch the special will unite all the forces to stop the forces of evil and inspire good. And I guess Emmett's now accused of being the special by Bad Cop, who's played by Liam Neeson. And there's just a lot of funny moments. Like, for example, Bad Cop, he's just funny of a character because he he has this, like, bad side where he's super serious, as Liam Neeson's a very serious actor. And then he has his good guy side, who's just like, Hi, buddy! It's, it's like, it's a hilarious voice. But it isn't until he is rescued. But Emmett's about to get melted away. But before that he was, he was told that he has friends. But it turns out his co-workers at the construction yard don't really remember him and they kind of just don't really care about him saying he ain't special but it turns out Emmett is special as it the this movie gives us the message I'll get I'll get to that later but uh but basically as Emmett's about to get melted away he is rescued by the mysterious woman who is revealed to be her name is Wild Style. So Wild Style, I actually really like that character. She's played by Elizabeth Banks, and she's she, I, I was what she what, I don't know if you'd say she's a goth, but like she she's just very cool. She's like she gets accused of being called a DJ, 
But uh, it but what she does to save him is that she builds like a giant motorcycle, and she tells Emmett that he was a useless nobody. But they get into this big car chase, and because he's special, because he found the piece of resistance that will stop President Business. And Emmett thought President Business was a good guy, but it turns out President Business is not a good guy after all, since he's trying to control everything. But as this is happening, we get this very cool car chase where they're just crossing through various Lego streets, jumping through houses and getting chased by the bad guys. And but uh, I like the part where while I was like, you drive and then she takes out a few bad guys. Emma's trying to control the motorcycle, but they manage to find a gateway to get into a, what appears to be in a portal to another world but uh wildstyle finds out that emma is really average like he's just in the everything is awesome like he this is the part where wildstyle just doubts emmett like she doesn't trust him and just thinks he's useless because he does he can't master build which will reveal be later but it turns out they have to look for the the vitruvius to figure out what makes him special? So, uh, Emmett says sorry since he he did, has no clue what's going on. But it, it turns out that uh that present business is trying to take over well, this whole Lego city because he's tired of everyone, every Lego character like being creative and making their own builds, and he wants to make everything perfect. And so it's up for a band of various Lego characters to come together and stop him. And they believe that the special should be able to take him down. That being Emmett. But they don't believe he's a special. But it isn't until we meet our wise character named Vitruvius at the Wild West. We see like a bunch of cool cowboys. Our characters dress up like cowboys. And they meet the Vitruvius who's playing the piano. And he, I do like the line where he's like... Meet me upstairs in 15 seconds. And he's just like, he's saying he's a blind man who cannot see. He's just playing along with whoever he wants to be. But uh, as they meet upstairs, Wildstyle tells Vitruvius that they found the special. And Vitruvius thinks it's her, but it turns out it's Emmett. And so Wildstyle says he's not special because he can't master build. And turns out master build is like, it's basically... We all know Lego as like we build it with with the instructions, but it turns out master building is basically building without the instructions. It's all in your mind. It's your own creative way of building. But they all decide to go into Emmett's brain. And we get like these very cool sculptures. We are told about the man upstairs. Family jumping to things, I know, but like but it turns out the man upstairs is basically a a the big bad or like the god of lego or something is that that's how they interpret it but uh Emmett has other ideas as he comes up with the double decker couch so the double decker couch is quite iconic it's actually a cool idea like you just it's a couch but a bunk bed but like if you really are on a couch wouldn't your legs get in the way i don't know but like i guess it's good for like lego since we just Sit them flat. But as this is going on, they are interrupted by Bad Cop. Who wants to, only wants the piece of resistance. And we get this very cool chase scene. They, they use like various vehicles to get it away. And they get onto a train. And they need like a wheel. Once they lose one of their wheels on their little tractor thing. But Emma decides to actually plays smart and he takes his hairpiece off and he uses his head as like a wheel and he puts it on attaches it to himself and they actually see potential in Emmett and but as this is going on they end up exploding from bad cop and they're and Emmett's like saying like oh this is the best 15 minutes of my life but we think they're about to fall to their death but it turns out they are saved by, get this, the Batman. 
And earlier, Wild Style said she had a boyfriend, and it turns out it's Batman. So that's, it's wild. I knew Batman was going to be in this movie, but I, I was wondering what they were going to do with him. Once I saw him, I went, oh, Batman. And he's played by Will Arnett. So Will Arnett is actually really good as Batman. Like, he has that grouchiness in his voice. Like, he has the perfect grittiness. Grumpiness in that Batman voice. Like, I don't know. In this interpretation of Batman, he's more portrayed as, like, self-centered. And kind of just in it for himself. And it more explores his character development in the Lego Batman movie. I'll talk about that movie one day. But uh, Batman looks really awesome in this movie. It made me fall in love with my, ba- my love of Batman a lot more. Since personal story, I got into Batman because of the Lego Batman. I was given Lego Batman a video game. And so it felt really special to see him in this movie. I think a lot of us kids... Probably thought Batman was the best part in this movie. We're like, we love Batman. And he has, like, the best vehicles in this movie. Like, his Batwing looks amazing. But as this uh, this chase is going on, Batman manages to hold off against Bad Cop. And they manage to drive into the sun. And they're going to go to Cloud Cuckoo Land to make a, have a big speech about how to take down President Business to come up with a plan. To take him down. But as this is going on. President Business is just plotting his. Way to get to Emmett. But he. he, he, Because he's so average. As they're all saying. That they can't find him. And I think he even punishes Bad Cop. By using. Various Lego objects. That will destroy it. That actually hurts Lego. In real life. Like if he. Use a bandage, it will probably ruin the face. If you use glue, it sticks. That's why the what they call the craggle is the most dangerous. Because if you actually glue Lego in real life, it actually hurts the Lego. But uh, present business is is threatening to hurt Bad Cop by uh, threatening to glue his parents if he's not on his side. And they're making him choose. And so they use like a toothpick. Like a, like a, I don't know what it's called. Oh man, I'm bra- uh, I'm losing brain cells. Uh, but uh, they managed to erase basically Bad Cop's face. And they use the glue to uh, attack his parents. Like it's sad for Bad Cop. Like he goes through this little arc. He wants to be loyal to his parents. But present business forces him to be on the good, the bad side. But as this is going on, our fellow heroes go to Cloud Cuckoo Land. And that's where we meet Unikitty. I, I don't know if I have a picture of her. I'm so sorry, I'm spoiling stuff. Uh, but uh, Unikitty, uh, I think she's in one of the photos. Uh, yeah, Unikitty is really adorable. Like, she's just a cool character. She looks very sparkly. And all I can say is, like, I don't know, she's voiced well. And she's definitely a loyal ally to our fellow team characters. But as this is going on, we're getting a big Cloud Cuckoo Land speech from Emmett. And in the world of Cloud Cuckoo Land looks very awesome. It's very colorful. A lot of cutesy stuff. But that's where we get a bunch of cool cameos from our fellow characters from our favorite franchises. That's where we get a scene with Superman and Green Lantern. And fun fact, they're voiced by the 21 Jump Street actors. I think this, I think the pe- filmmakers were behind 21 Jump Street, and so they brought two actors. It's like a parody of 21 Jump Street. They're playing Superman and Green Lantern, and it's very awesome. It felt very nostalgic to see Green Lantern and Superman, since they're not really in Lego sets I know Superman's in a lot of sets, but they're more focused on Batman sets lately. But it was awesome seeing Green Lantern and Wonder Woman in in this movie. We even get a Flash cameo. It's very noticeable once we learn the character of Metal Beard. We'll get to that in a bit. But uh, the, the various cameos that made my jaw drop, we saw, get this, we saw LeBron, uh, Mr. Shaquille O'Neal. We saw... Gandalf, uh, we saw Dumbledore from Harry Potter, we saw the Green Ninja from Ninjago, a mermaid, uh, we saw 
Benny, who will be relevant later. But uh, we also saw Michelangelo, the artist, Abraham Lincoln, and my favorite cameo, Michelangelo from the Ninja Turtles. So you know I'm a big Ninja Turtle fan. You can watch this channel. Seeing him in this movie was wild. They must have had some certain rights back then, but he couldn't show up in the sequel. But uh, this this felt super awesome to see in this movie. Like, this is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie for obvious reasons. And some people don't like cameos in movies, but hey, I really like this in this movie. But as this is going on, our fellow characters are about to make a speech. Emmett is going to make a speech. And he feels he is not worthy enough to uh, take down present business. And our fellow heroes take this as like, oh, Emmett doesn't want to do anything to help. I mean, I do like the line where the where, like the sea monster guy goes, is that supposed to help us? And they throw stuff at him. But this is all interrupted when Bad Cop shows up. They managed to put a tracking device on Emmett during the Wild West. And now they have to escape Cloud Cuckoo Land. But that's where we meet our fellow character Benny, who helps, who wants to, who's like obsessed with making spaceships. And he's based off an actual old Lego. If you know your Lego history, there was I think he was one of the earliest Lego minifigures to appear in a Lego set because Lego sets used to just be bricks. But, uh, they started adding characters in, like, I think the 80s and 90s? I'd have to look it up. But, uh, Benny is, like, really obsessed with, uh, spaceships. But they said that it's the skies are surrounded, so they want to build a, a bad, like, a boat because Batman comes up with it. He gets his Batmobile destroyed, and he says, dang it, and Wonder Woman gets her invisible jet destroyed, and she's like, dang it. Funny line. But uh, they managed to build a boat with their building, and Emmett's like, what can I do? And he says, and Vitruvius is like, hey, Emmett, you got to do what's best for you. But as this is going on, we, uh, we managed, they all managed to escape underwater. But uh, it, uh, Unike's really bummed that her, that her home's gone. And that's where Emmett tries to make things better by saying the double-decker couch. And Batman says, you were the most useless person. But this is all interrupted as they're underwater. They manage to get, because there's too much weight on the submarine, it manages to get destroyed and they manage to hide in the double-decker couch. So it wasn't useless after all. But uh, our, our fellow characters, we think they're gone. Our, our bad guys think they're gone, but they're rescued by Metal Beard. So Metal Beard is actually a really cool character. I, I don't know. He's not a character I think too much about, but uh, he his story is actually really interesting. It's kind of dark. Like he tried to take a stand against President Business with a group of people, of Lego people, and he manages to only come out with just his head, <laughs> and that's why he's Metal Beard. Very cool dude. He's got his own pirate ship. But like, it looks amazing. Like, the detail and everything. And, but it turns out Emmett finally gets to make the speech he was trying to make. He's basically saying he may not look worthy, but he has a plan. And he wants to take down present business. His plan is to basically make a spaceship, go undercover in the skies, and find a way to get, shut down the shield for the craggle and... Put the piece of resistance on there and basically save the world. Basically. But our fellow other characters are captured by present business. And uh, we get this funny scene where like Superman is captured. And he's taken up <laughs> to the ranks and he's like freaking out. But then it turns out he's right next to Green Lantern. And the two ended up accidentally getting stuck together because of gum. Superman is defeated by gum. That's crazy. And it's, it's just a funny scene. But our fellow heroes are ready to come up with a plan to take down present business. But they need a hyperdrive for their spaceship. That's where we get this epic cameo from the Star Wars characters. We actually got Billy D. Williams and Anthony Daniels. Which is cool. But our fellow characters are... Uh, we think Batman is gone because he leaves. 
But it turns out he just stole, he went on the ship to steal the hyperdrive, and he causes our fellow Star Wars characters to uh, get eaten by the worm thing from Empire Strikes Back, which is wild. So, uh, Batman has a weird heart, and it, this is our, our only crossover where Batman teams up with Star Wars characters, which is wild, I think. Uh, I do like the scene where Emmett says Batman's a big jerk, and so, but it turns out Batman's still on their side, like I said. And they managed to use the 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 spaceship to get in there. And Batman has to use a bunch of batarangs to open the gate way to get through. It was a funny scene. But as this is going on, our fellow characters are... Looks like things are going to turn out the way they are. Uh, Bat Bruce Wayne. Batman dresses up like Bruce Wayne. And Unikitty is sneaking the present business to... To distract him, basically, and in Wildstyle finds a way to open the shield. But before she got to do that, she actually has an emotional moment with Emmett. She actually reveals her name is Lucy. But while they were undercover, they end up having to sing the Everything is Awesome song with the robots so they could get distracted. But uh, as uh, this is going on, Lucy, Wildstyle manages to leave. Emmett on his own for a bit, but he's with Batman, of course, and they managed to try to get onto the shield, uh, the thing that will destroy the the craggle, and Emmett tries to put his piece of resistance on there, but it, it all fails as our fellow ca- characters are captured by President Business and his army, but the Vitruvius was sneaking around trying to find his way through like how Obi-Wan did in New Hope. But he manages to uh, be called old by President Business. But he manages to take out a bunch of drones. He's a total badass. But unfortunately, the Vitruvius is... His head is decapitated by President Business. And Emmett is super sad. They're all sad because the Vitruvius died. He died a hero. And he manages to tell Emmett before he died that the prophecy was actually just made up. So, I honestly, the prophecy wasn't actually, this doesn't really feel like it was made up because there was someone special enough to maybe take a stand against President Business. But it turns out the whole message of the movie is actually that everyone's special in their own ways. And, yeah, anyone, they have the courage to to take down President Business, which is later in the movie, but, uh, but Emmett gets captured, and they're doing, like, this computer thing where it says, like, 100 Mississippi or something. It, it's it's weird, but, uh, but uh, Emmett manages to escape, and he says goodbye to Wild Style. And earlier in the movie, they show, like, this void thing that, like, turns out if you fall into it, you end up falling into nothingness. But uh, I guess Emmett has the courage to make the sacrifice to save everyone. He manages to jump off the cliff, and we all think Emmett's gone. And Wildstyle says, like, don't do it, Emmett. And she actually is devastated by Emmett possibly being dead. But it turns out Emmett didn't actually die. Because while Wildstyle is inspired to have everyone come together... And build whatever they can to take down President Business. As President Business is now going to use the Craggle to, t- to glue everyone. But while everyone's inspired, uh, Benny finally makes a spaceship. He goes crazy. He They build it. And I know I'm jumping a lot. I'm trying to recap this as fast as I can. But uh, they all they all go on the spaceship. And they all go. Like Benny just goes crazy like I said. But what? But also wonders what Emmett would like, what 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 he'd think. As they're all inspired to take down President Business, but it turns out Emmett has fallen into a big void, and he feels like it's falling forever. And it turns out the big plot twist in this movie is that all the events in this movie is all being played by by an actual kid named Finn, who's having a fun time playing with his Legos, of course. But it turns out, uh, it's all interrupted by the, who's revealed to be the man upstairs. It's Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell is quite wild in this movie. And he's a dad who's, like, uh, a little too strict towards his kid. He's mad at his son because he's playing with 
his, I guess, collection? But, uh, but he tells Finn that it isn't a toy, even though Legos are a toy. And Finn keeps defending it, and he's like, hey, I was just playing. I, like, this ain't any, I'm not doing anything wrong. And, but, uh, Finn's dad's just not having it, and he's, like, instead gonna, like, he ends up act because he's messing around with Finn's creations. He ends up destroying all the creations the Lego people were creating to take down present business, and uh, he he manages to throw all Emmett's friends. And Emmett's like, no, like it, it feels weird. Like the big plot twist is like it's all being controlled by a person, but they are they're like they have their own inner, inner psyche when they're in this real world. As they real as Emmett realizes that the real world is different from the Lego world, I know that's confusing to say, but I don't know, it's a, it's it's quite a great plot twist. But as this is going on, Finn's dad starts to realize that his son is very creative. He's very fun when he plays with his Legos, and he and Finn actually explains the plot of what he's doing with his fellow Legos. And his son, his father has a change of heart. He gives his son a big hug. And they decide to continue to let Finn continue playing. As Emmett's now thrown, as he tried to get to the piece of resistance, he manages to fall and grab it during when, I guess, his father was trying to glue everything. But uh, uh, Emmett, uh, Finn manages to grab Emmett and he manages to fall into the portal back to his world. That's where Emmett finally learns the master build. And he manages to build a giant construction worker mech. And he manages to take down all the robots. But that's where he finally has a toe on toe with present business. And they have an emotional talk. Basically, Emmett tries to not fight. But instead, have a heart-to-heart with present business. And he says, hey, we're not doing anything wrong. We're just creative people building something new. He says, I want you to be good. And he's like, you don't have to be the bad guy. And I guess this helps present business get out of his stubbornness and, I guess, badness? And he manages to uh, put the piece of resistance onto the craggle and it explodes and that's where everyone's finally free. They they build like a Finn and his father build like a f- giant uh flower gardener to free everyone from the glue. Everyone's reunited, and our fellow characters are finally happy. And, and uh, while Sal and Emmett finally hug, and it looks like they're about to get together, but uh, whilst they're interrupted by Batman. But uh, Batman's like, no, no, you guys deserve to be f- together. It's I'm completely fine with it. And then the two hold hands, Wild Style and Emmett, and they think that's it. But Emmett's dad's actually going to let Finn's sister, little sister, come down. But it turns out, the plot twist at the end, our fellow characters are now up against what turns out to be Lego Duplo. So that's the Lego movie. What can I say? It's an amazing movie. And I reviewed this movie with Hedgehog Nerd. Go check that out. We went more in depth with the movie. But uh, this is probably the same level of it. But uh, I really hope you enjoyed this review. My favorite parts was the animation. It looks amazing for its time. I, I'm surprised Lego doesn't really make movies like this anymore. Since it took us a while to just get the Lego movie too. But this animation looks amazing. They took their time with it. And the voice cast is amazing, even though it's a celebrity voice cast. It has very fun characters, memorable jokes, a meaningful lesson about how we're all special in our own unique ways. And it's okay to be creative, to express yourself. And that's what basically the message is of the Lego movie. Yeah, so I give this movie a 10 out of 10. One of my favorite movies I'll honestly remember for all throughout my life. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching, and everything is awesome. Sometimes.